we're going to talk today about functions and definition of function and then give a couple examples of what a function is. Uh, first, I'm going to start off with definition of function. And this is straight out of our book here. A function is a rule that assigns a unique value given a value from a set of admissible values, which is kind of confusing. Um, but let's see if we can pick apart the important things here. Let's see. It's a rule. So this is some kind of method or uh, way to make a calculation. And we've got to get something unique out of this for everything that we put into it. And something that's a little subtle is this idea of a set of admissible, admissible values. All right. So let's explore this. Let's uh, try to bring this down and focus a bit on what's going on here. So first, what do we need? So we need a rule or a set of ins uh, instructions to make, allow us to make a calculation. And we need a set of values that we're going to call the admissible set. Okay? This is often referred to as domain. So this is the domain is the set of things that we can put into the function. Right? So we have to talk about both of these things as we proceed. So first, let's talk about rule. So when I talk about the rule, what the heck does this mean? One way we talk about these rules or these methods is what's called algebraic expression. Okay. Or we use a table. We'll give an example of that later. We could do this graphically. We could do the graph of a function. We can have a written or verbal description of a function. And this is how these things often, most often come up in practice and what makes them very confusing. And unfortunately, there's a lot of other different ways we can do these things. Okay? So these things come up a lot in practice. And there's just a lot of different ways we can use to express these things. So my first example is going to be the algebraic expression. So what's an example of an algebraic expression? So that's an example of uh, how we de describe a function using an algebraic expression. What the heck does this mean? So we're going to take a number, we'll call it say x, because we don't know what it's going to be until we get it. And we're going to take x times x, and that's the number we get out. So that's the rule that we're given here. And this is the algebraic expression. And this is the written description for that same rule. So both of these things mean the same thing. Okay. So in this case, if I were to give you 2.5, the rule would say take 2.5, multiply it by itself, and I get 6.25 values. So there's two things. There's the number I give it, and the number we get out, and notice because we have a pair of numbers here, we have a point, and we can think about that in terms of the coordinate plane and where this point might lie. So if we were to look at the coordinate plane, we would go to say 1, 2, 2.5, and then go up to 6.25, and that's the point associated with this pair where I input 2.5 and I get out 6.25. Okay. Now, in this case, what's the domain? The 
there's no real restriction on what I can do with uh, the numbers here. Basically, if you give me a number, I just multiply it by itself. So there's no kind of restriction that says that given a number, I can't use this rule. So in this case, the domain is all possible numbers. Okay? And there's a lot of different ways we can do this. I could just say all possible numbers. I could do it as an interval from minus infinity to infinity. Or I could use a, oops, sorry, can't be equal. Or I can use an algebraic notation. That should be an x. Okay? Okay. Let's look at an example with a table. And the way we define it with a table is basically to list out all possible inputs and outputs. And then have those have them arranged in a nice array. Okay? So example. My inputs I'm going to put here, my outputs I'm going to put here. Suppose my possible inputs are 3, 4, 10, 15. And if you give me 3, the rule is I return 8. If you give me 4, the rule is that I give you 7. If you give me 10, the rule says I give you 6. And if you give me 15, the rule says I give you 12. So in this case, would say that g of 4 equals 7, and you can read it across in rows. Sometimes people put these, or flip this the other way, and you read it in uh, columns. It's all good. Okay. What's the domain? In this case, the domain is all possible inputs are 3, 4, 10, and 15. And I'm not using any kind of interval notation here because these are discrete numbers. I can't put in 3.17. I can only put in 3, 4, 10, or 15. Okay, so it's not an interval thing. Um, in this case, I can tell you what all possible output values are. So all possible output values, or all the possible things I can get out of this, would be 8, 7, 6, or 12. All, right, so all possible values that can come out of this, I can write like that. And we're going to give this a name. And we're going to call the all possible outputs, we will call the range. Because okay, we don't want these numbers to feel left out, because we've already talked about all possible Let's do another example. Suppose I give you a number x and I'm going to return another number. We'll call it r. And what's special about r? R is going to be the special number that if I take R times R I'm going to, and I get X, then that's the number I'm going to return. So, I give you X equals 0, well that has to be 0, because 0 times 0 is 0. If I give you 1, well, it could be 1, right? Because 1 times 1 is 1, but could also be minus 1, because minus 1 times minus 1 is also equal to 1. x equals 4, then r is 2, ah, but it's also minus 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. Now in this case, when I return a number, I'm not returning a single unique number, I'm returning in some cases just find one, one or two cases where this happens, it blows everything up. But I can find situations where it returns two, so I'm 
unfortunately, this does not describe a function. Okay. <coughs> so this is a problem. Let's look at this graphically. So let's remember this. These, these points, what do I have? I've got x equals 0, r equals 0. x equals 1, r is 1. Or minus 1. I have 4. I've got 2. Or minus 2. And if I had 9, I'm going to have 3 minus 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. It goes on like this. So what happens? Let me graph this. Let me find the graph of this thing. I got 0, 0. I have 1, and 1, 4, Two, the nine, three, minus three. There's going to be numbers in between here. If I were to graph this thing, you have something like that. Okay. Now, so what's the problem here? So I can find some values of x, say, at nine, where there's more than one point this goes through. So if I were to draw this line here, because there are more than one points where this vertical line goes through, that means there are, there's at least one pair here that has the same x value but different y values. So again, it's not a function. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Here's the problem. Is it this idea of finding this special number where the, if I take this number and multiply it by itself, I get the original number. That's a, actually a very useful thing to have. And I would like for this to be a function because functions are useful and I, there's no ambiguity in terms of what I'm going to get. So here's what we're going to do. is We're going to say that we're just going to look at, say, the top half of this curve and ignore that. What happens? If I do that, if I just magically erase that bottom, I now have a function. So you can give me any value of x, there's only going to be one value of y corresponding to that. And what are we going to call this function? We're going to call it the square root. Okay? So the written description of this is, We're going to do the same thing we had before. It's going to be some number r where r times r is equal to x and r has to be non-negative, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, right? so that's how we're going to define the square root function. And now again, this is a function. And it works nicely. Okay. Now, What's the domain and range of this thing? So the domain, uh, so let's see. So if you give me the value x, I want to find a number r times r that gives me that. Now here's the problem, is that if this is a positive or a negative number, either way, it's always going to be a positive number that comes out of this. So the value of x that I put into this has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so this is one way to talk about the domain. Or I could use interval notation. Let's say that. Or I can tell you it's a set of non-negative numbers. Okay, it's not all positive numbers because x equals 0 is in there. And we need to say non-negative to make sure we include that. Now, what's the range? For the range, what are we going to do here? Well, again, if you give me um, a number here, I want to find the numbers that are, when I multiply them, I get the original numbers. But I have this caveat that they have to be non-negative. So by the way I've defined this, by the construction of this thing, 
it's going to be all non-negative numbers. And in this case, the domain is basically the same thing. 